You're listening to Unregular Radio. The following program may be intended for adults only. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed are not necessarily those of Unregular Radio, its staff, or affiliates. Furthermore, you should not attempt to recreate any of the situations described as it may prove to be physically, legally, or financially harmful. Enjoy. Hey everybody, I'm not usually political. Everybody knows that the King of Pot kind of sits back and I, and I let my brother in the movement, Mike, can uh, do a lot of the political stuff. But I learned from him and when I learned from him, especially getting into the, uh, the, the mass DPH regulations for medical marijuana, you know, I got very involved what they were trying to do with a law that we already have. Okay, and let me, let's put this in layman terms. We already have a medical marijuana law that was passed in November. And now we have opponents, uh, people that were against this law, let's say. Okay, they've been allowed to sit on this board or this committee and help redraft the laws we already had. Now, let me explain what has happened here. We get the vote in. They end up uh, pre-drafting a, a regulation uh, on it. We go in and we speak as the public on what they proposed in the drafts. Now, me and Mike went three weeks ago to the Mass Department of Health. Talk about these regulations. There were some good things in there. And there were a lot of bad things in there. And in the beginning, while we were there, all we saw were a bunch of suits. Okay? A lot of suits, a lot of people with money. Everybody talking about dispensary, 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 dispensary. I mean, come on. Nothing about patients until Mike got up and finally said to the Department of Health Regulations Committee, Hey, uh, did we ask what this is going to cost the patients? Has anybody here, everybody's talking about dispensaries, you know? And, 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 and now, after listening to us, getting up there talking, I myself got up there and talked. It seemed like it, they didn't even listen. I said this. They said under the law now we all can grow marijuana, okay, until the dispensary is built. But after the dispensary is built, now you can't grow any more of your medicine, and the medicine that you were probably growing for far less than you could pay in the dispensary, you are not, not allowed anymore to grow. You'd have to apply for a high chip. There's about 12 questions. You've got to submit a fee. You've got to wait until you find out if you, you get uh, uh, okay or not. And then your grow has to be inspected, this and that. Now, it's all this red tape. The, the average person isn't going to go through it. So they're going to make it hard for you to procure your own medicine. And why is that bad, you say? Well, let me explain. There are certain strains of medical marijuana that works for certain people. So if you're allowed to grow, let's say, an indigo that's a blue cheese strain, and then you have to stop growing, and now you might have to drive 150 miles because that, that doesn't matter where the dispensary is, the 25-mile clause, whatever. No, 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 it could be anywhere in Massachusetts. You've got to drive there and pay whatever price they're doing. It's like, okay, you have one supermarket in Massachusetts, and everybody's going to go shopping there. Wow, wouldn't you like to have the monopoly on that, folks? That's exactly what was happening, and that's what we were in there talking about with the drafts. We wanted those things changed. We didn't want them to say that we couldn't grow, that we had to buy from a dispensary. We didn't want them to say that there was only going to be one caregiver per person. That's ridiculous, too. That has to end. Did they listen? No. They re-released they re -released the, they re -released the, the drafts this week, the final one, and it's worse. It, 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 nothing changed. It's all for the suits. It's all for the big business. It's all for people that want to get into the dispensary business and sell marijuana to the patients. It's not about the patients, folks. No, that's why King of Pot is coming out on this now. I want to know what MPAA is doing. I hear that they say that this is a good law. How is this a good law? You explain to me how this is a good law. I want you to come on my show, live with the King of Pot, and tell me how this is a good law. Where I can't grow my own medicine for a strain or something that works for me that they may not even have at this dispensary. So tell me how this is for the patients. You're MPAA, you're supposed to be for the patients. I believed in you. I can't believe that you think this is a good law. I think it's a horrible law.
Welcome to Hotheads, where activism happens on unregularradio.com. There's only one of us today with uh, Rob Kaufman behind the board. What's up, Rob? How you doing? Doing awesome. Yeah. And you know that guy? That just uh, we I do know video. that guy. Who is that guy? It's the king of pot. Yes, it is. It is. Fire it up. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty impressive how he's got all those cameras and microphones and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's taking it to another level, so to speak. He certainly is. And uh, fired up about this issue. He's, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll be talking to him today, maybe not, but uh, there's a lot happening right now in regards to medical marijuana. And uh, the King of Pot and myself are really teaming up to uh, fight back. We're like the only opposition we feel. We feel like, uh, like he said, a bunch of suits, a bunch of you know people who are hired to uh, screw patients. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're seeing right now in Massachusetts. So... Uh, there's a lot happening because uh, that was a video from a couple weeks ago, and uh, we also have a big King of Pot feature in uh, Dig Boston. And one of the things the King of Pot said in that video is he wanted a response from Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance, which supposedly represents the patients and which we've both worked with for a number of years, and uh, we've kind of come against them recently. And uh, there is going to be a response from Mass Patients uh, in the next Dig Boston. I'll call them to some of the questions not all the questions but some of them and uh you know we're still even though we're getting uh responses we're not lightening up because this is really important for patients and uh we, you know we've also decided the king of pot and myself have decided that we're going to uh, take this to the next level against the mass dph calling it uh ops dph dph ops we are uh going to be staging something we're going to have a protest we're also going to uh, formally lobby and uh, hopefully enter and meet and negotiate and talk to and get some questions answered and get some information from the Mass Department of Public Health representing the patients who aren't being heard from, who we hear from on Facebook, on Hotmail, on you know all the different social networks, our emails. We we hear from them all the time, and they're not being represented fully. And uh, you know we're going to keep pushing until we get that. And so stay tuned. There's going to be a lot happening this week. You know, just this week. When the dig article comes out, that's going to be explosive. It is, you know, if you haven't been checking it out, check out digboston.com and uh, put in Mike Can, and you'll see a number of those articles. It's uh, things are happening related to medical marijuana, and we're pretty much at the center of the only opposition, in my opinion, to what's happening. So, what do you think, Rob? You're you're just an average dude, and yeah. you have your show. You hate everybody. <laughs> what do you think about well, the whole thing? I don't know what to think. You don't. I really know. don't. I mean, this is all like, uh, it's like you're speaking another language to me. I'm not really sure. I mean, I understand that the patients well, are having a tough time with this. Yeah, there are some patients and there are some recreational users. Obviously, there's more yes. recreational users than patients out yeah. there. But uh, the whole thing is, uh, it's like, like you said, the King of Pot is saying, basically, can you imagine if, uh, if all of a sudden they made food a monopoly? You can only buy food at one supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty good for them. Yeah. And that's what they're basically doing with this this marijuana that anyone can grow. Anyone can grow. Why are we still continuing to force people to spend $400 an ounce? Yeah. What are the laws on growing your own food? Can you do that? You can do it for yourself if it's not profit. Oh. If, you know, if it's for yourself, you yeah. can, anyone can do that. No license required. Yeah. If you're growing it commercially, then you have to, you know. Yeah. Well, they should do that. I know. Yeah. That's the whole... That's what we're trying to do in Massachusetts 2016, but every time this stuff gets done, it's like all these lobbyists and lawyers come in, yeah, and they tell us the way it's got to be because of the law, because of because of it won't pass or the, you know, and there's a lot of special interest involved and it's hard for people to know who to really trust. Yeah, they just come in and wag their fingers at you, right? Yeah. Like that. They just go like this, yeah. wagging fingers. And the people who are who are running this DPH seem to be like the ones that want to force people in rehab for marijuana so if you get caught by the police you have to instead of going to jail you have to spend five thousand dollars with their clinic that they happen to work at oh to get healed jeez louise you gotta find the jesus god you gotta you gotta go jesus god yeah it's uh it's 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 the 12-step process yeah oh wow and that's what they do doing with the doctors too so that's why the doctors won't speak out and like even sign prescriptions most doctors are masked because 
this is what's happening is they, they got kind of a gang going on this 12 step and it's and it is it is about faith I, I i believe in god myself but i don't believe i'm pushing it on people especially using the government that's evil yes that's what, just, whatever happened is separation of church and state yeah you know yeah so we're dealing with a lot <laughs> <laughs> but the king of heart and i are, are really united and and shit seems to be going pretty well and and that way um I also get some other news. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be writing a new book. That's something that I never thought I'd say. Really? Yes. What's it about? Uh, I can't quite say, but it, it's related to the day columns. Can you tell us what you're going to call it? I don't know yet. You should uh, You it's, should have the cover be like you wearing a sweater. Maybe it'll just be like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll wear a sweater. You wearing a sweater going like this with, with your a hands pipe? Up, Like, what the heck? I know what the heck. I'm writing a book. Yeah. yeah. The sweater has to have kitties on it. Kitties? Yeah, kitties. Just little kitties, you know? Well, okay. Small kittens. Yeah. Or you can hold a cat. That's done been done too many times. Holding so. a cat? Yeah. I'd rather hold a dog yeah. if I was going to. Right. You, know. you can put a, put the dog on your shoulder. Put one dog on your shoulder and one cat on your other shoulder. I did the dog go thing for, like on Channel 2. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, way back for decrim. I helped get decrim bass with my dog. I used my dog to get de- marijuana decrim. What'd your dog do? He, uh, I walked my dog on TV and like uh, pulled the heartstrings. I was the victim. Oh, of this bad law. Oh, we like, could change it with decrim. Was it like a news feature where they used oh, yeah. the footage of you walking with your dog like yeah. this, man? And they blacked out my face because I, I, oh. I wasn't comfortable being out in the open. Like, could they I black out the dog's face? No. <laughs> my dog was a star. Like he, he got more FaceTime than I did. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where we're going, but it's 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 hot in here. There's a lot going on with the medical marijuana. We want to hear from you six one seven two zero six ten fifty. And the dude is here. Who's here? Uh, Frank is here. Frank Capone. Um, Frank Capone in the house. Yay. Got a little held up today. Uh, don't think that um, Atlantic Ave is faster than the highway. Oh, yeah. Not on That's my Saturday. advice. Not on a But there's a lot of nice sights to see on Atlantic Ave right yeah, now. Yeah, they probably have, like, food trucks. That's usually what they do on Atlantic Ave. Yeah, on Homeland Saturday. Security was oh, down too. there. Um, you know, they were hanging out. Hanging out with the uh, duck boats. Yeah, duck boating, you know, checking the ladies out, you know, <laughs> protecting our freedoms. <laughs> so, Frankie, uh, <laughs> I, I know we haven't even talked about because we we just so busy uh, with other things, but uh, we're... Uh, the King of Pot and I. There's a bunch of stuff on the on the on the on the top, and we get some get. We got a call-in guest coming definitely today. A, a candidate for office, Miami Beach City uh, Mayor. The mayor, you know, the mayor. He's he's. I'm, I'm all screwed up, but he's the candidate for mayor of Miami candidate. Miami City Beach. Soon to be potentially mayor. Miami. Yeah, and Steve Burks is name, and uh, he's famous on YouTube. He's got some parodies. Uh, one from Eminem from a few years back, and, and the latest one that's really huge is Macklemore. It's got over a million views. He, he this, and he used to be a, 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 a champion tennis player, and he knows a lot of celebrities. And he got thirty percent of the vote last time, came in second, and he's running for re-election again. He's got a movie coming out. He's an athlete. He's uh, for marijuana legalization, and I, I like what he's doing. And, and, and through YouTube, and it's kind of cool to see him really become from a comedian entertainer. Uh, with a message to now take it, getting involved in politics, real world. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it'd be great to talk to that dude. I can't. I look yeah. forward to it. And also, we have any. You know, I'm getting all fired up. We played the King of Pot uh, video from a few weeks ago. Yeah. DPH me- medical marijuana, and uh, there's a story on Mass Live right now. This is what we should come back and talk about. Yeah, yeah. I was reading that. That looks interesting. Yeah. I want to know more. Yeah. We'll talk about that. It's about the suits again. It's about these goddamn attorneys. I'm going to say it today. We're going to go after these people. I've had enough. Is there a new blog we can post on? A what? A new blog? Did this uh, this character that we're going to talk about? Did he has? Does he have a blog post? Oh, I know how. Like Edelman did. Like we took him down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just say keep passing the Dig Boston articles around and and wait to this week because it's going to be another big one and we're not going to stop. Uh, there's going to be so many news stories coming out, and yeah, that's a good point, Frank, because that shows us how much power we have. So many things have happened over the last few weeks. We haven't even talked about free Cammy D again this yep. week. We'll be that's talking right. about that. That's right. We have more news on that. Yeah, so you know where we are. With just so many things happening, 617-206-1050. If you want to call in, you listen on regular radio, it is... Two Hotheads. We'll be back in a minute. We'll go for some music. Clapping. On regular radio. Back live. Two hotheads. Where activism is happening. It's happening. That's right. 
That was the worst, like, uh, what do they call that when two singers? That wasn't worse. That was all right, all right. pretty good for me. It was a good start. Yeah, you're doing I've good. I've had better. And I'm trying hard. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm burping up beer. Yeah, that's okay. We got a phone number over here. It's 617 206 1050. Or 1050. Or 1050. So it's 617 206 1050. That's right. And uh, right now we're going to get into. Uh, some uh, medical marijuana issues that we have going on in the state right now. And uh, I'm going to talk about a trend of lawyers uh, popping up out of the blue and uh, making recommendations. Yeah, and speaking out at uh, Department of Public Health, Mass Department, DPH, Public Health, the hearings for uh, regulating medical marijuana. Supposedly under the guise of being in the public interest. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Uh, this this guy, attorney Valerio Romano, Good made job. some statements at uh, yeah on the mass medical <laughs> marijuana uh, hearing recently about the fees and the uh, licensing of patients and caregivers and dispensaries. And he had some very interesting things to say. There were quite a few lawyers there. Some, you know, some I give props to, like a Dick Evans or a, um, um, I forget her name, but there was a couple other other. Lawyers, we know, like uh, Shaleen Title, you know, is another one who's a lawyer. That that group, they definitely are speaking, hopefully, out for the patients, and it did seem like that from the article on Mass Live from Dan Ring. But uh, this Valero, Valerio Romano, I got a lot of problems with his uh, statements. Yeah, so this guy um, is an attorney representing who knows who, and... Uh, what he demanded, or what he suggested, or, or, or recommended as as a lawyer, uh, was that we needed to make sure that you know marijuana prices, medical marijuana prices, were equal to street prices right now, which is half the price of gold. <laughs> which so, is which is half the price of gold. Which is a lot right now with a <laughs> dollar and a shitter, and uh, people not having great benefits and jobs as much as they like as in the past. Yeah, and so. If we're talking about medical marijuana being the same as street value, and you know, well, his well, back to his concern, right? Yeah. This is this is uh, the uh, the uh, gentleman's concern here is that patients will then turn around and if they get medical marijuana for cheaper than less, you know, cheaper than street value, they'll turn around and sell it for a profit. Yeah, he basically he said exactly that. He said about uh, three hundred dollars an ounce. Street prices is what people can expect to. S- Spend at a dispensary, uh, he said. Otherwise, a black market will be created with patients reselling the medical marijuana for profit. Oh no! No, I mean that's the, but that's that's exactly the point. Oh no! But that's exactly what's happening now. Is you have a black market, you know, and there's always going to be a black market until it's legalized exactly. completely. Exactly. You know, and that's just a reality of life. And but, what's his benefit? Like, why why would he say that? Well, I mean, he must not care about the patients because well, the reality of the situation is is that you know your health care isn't going to cover your ounces of weed. Yeah, let me be, let me say that, uh, Valerio. You you are acting like it's all about safety in the patients, but I think you're full of shit because the other statement you made to the uh, Mass Live related to these hearings was that you wanted to raise the price, raise the financial consideration for the potential dispensary owners, which I believe is about a half a million. Maybe it was reduced. It's a lot of money. And uh, to me, that shows that you are being backed right now with some people with money. Is that is that what's actually going on? Who are you an attorney for? What is your public interest in this? I, let's hear from it. If you're going to make statements like that and you're representing yourself as an attorney concerned with the subject, we want to know who's actually funding you. Who are your clients? What types of people? I, I think it's actually already known that he's representing people who want dispensaries, and I think it was indicated in that article. And uh, that's the angle. It's not about patience. It's about uh, having a monopoly. Yeah, and that's that's what it's going to be all about. Because I mean, what we what we voted for, what the people of Massachusetts voted for, was for patients to have access to medical marijuana in a way that was structured and ordered and and fair. For everybody, yeah, and and not just fair for people without a job. Like there's that, uh, and even uh, the fairness for people without a job is in question because of other state programs that have similar enactments. They they keep coming back to well, the people that don't have any income will be supplied with marijuana from the dispensary, which is what in a year or two. And what will be the quality of that marijuana be? Because in Rhode Island, I hear they have a similar program 
at the dispensary, but the patients with no income get shitty weed from them. So they get in like the Boston Brown, the people yeah, who are... <laughs> yeah. The shit they'll sell for $150, $200 an ounce. And Not the good stuff that, yeah. you, that you want for your actual condition. Let me hit my hat again. Yeah, he's, the he's, microphone. I'm an he's trying to play the drums and <laughs> even his hat are getting there. But uh, no, but seriously, like who is this dude work for? Because like, you know, like when we voted, we voted for this to, to, to take effect, you know, and and we didn't we didn't vote for folks from California and yeah, folks from, from Washington California State family, like. and folks from Colorado, you know, and just folks with money to come in here and subvert what we're trying to do as the Commonwealth and, and, and to, you know, take that step to legalize medical marijuana. You know, we didn't ask for that. We I didn't know. vote for that, you know? know. And that's what's being forced down our throats and you know Where was is, Valerio? is this attorney is this attorney one of those people oh, yes, that he is. that I is, you is. know, coming to Massachusetts in order to, you know, you know, represent big weed I know. or like is he just some dude that is maybe confused and doesn't really understand the realities of the, yeah, he of needs the situation to set the record straight because he's a suspect right now exactly and what's it's his not deal our fault that he's suspect and you want to get mad about it valerio call into our show reach out to us 617-206-1050 you can also find me on youtube mike can where you're watching this video you know how to get in touch with us you can reach out to the king of pot he knows us i uh, know they know that you ha- you are on his show and, and and you're familiar with him you know i just don't understand like where were you valerio where have you been in the past like where were you in massachusetts i saw shaleen title i saw dick evans i saw nicola these are some of the other uh people that represent other law firms that actually did seem to speak out for us patients whereas you took the opposite stand and they were here before it was profitable to be in medical marijuana as attorney in massachusetts and now you you you're one of those people who have appeared and uh, you're, I'm going to say, you're on the other side uh, at this point, unless you can prove you're not. And you're on the other side with uh, Dr. – what's his name? Dr. Steve Edelman. Edelman. You're yes, with him. that's right. You're yeah. in Heidi Heilman territory. You are uh, – that's what people in our community – you should shun Valerio Romano until he uh, owns up to what he actually means by this and, and, and speaks to us about it as patients. Well, yeah, and, and just comes clean, you know. I mean, don't say you're here representing patients, you know, when you're really here representing owners, you know, or growers or, yeah. you know, or whatever, you know. And we've lost our access. Like, I'm not even getting, I have a bad back condition. I have pain. I use medical marijuana. I don't use any other pills. And I'm going to continue to use it like Mr. DL says. I guess I'm with Mr. DL now. I'm going to use it from those street dealers that I actually like and support because this medical marijuana program, they've turned into a scam, and it's not something that I want to even support at this point. Well, it's just another. Until we get it right. Yeah, it's just another state sanctioned monopoly, basically. You know? I mean, that's the kind of thing that government is comfortable with dealing with, you know? And if. If it's something where it's like a you know every Tom, Dick, and Harry and Jane can come and open up their own dispensary, that's not something that the government is used to dealing with. They're used to dealing with you know higher up people who are on a certain sort of level and, and operate in a way that is like structured and corporate, you know. And that's what they're that's what the government is looking for. So the government is inclined to go that way in the first place, you know. And so we ended up with a situation where the folks with the money and the you know the right connections and the lobbying power came in, and they gave the government something they were used to. And they you know? buy into it. They believe in the safety thing. They're they believe in the, the crime. Yeah, and I don't system. blame them. It's a valid concern system. because this is a black market thing, and there's a lot of uh, money to be made. But at the same time, if you really want to change that, you take the profit incentive out of it, and you let everyone grow. And uh, grow small amounts. Like, you know, keep it under 50 plants, 25, whatever amount you want to come up with, and let everyone just get a license and grow. And if there's any problems, they lose their license. And that's basically it. We don't need inspections. We don't need all this other bullshit. People have been growing for years. Let them grow. Let them license. Let them uh, actually serve people and, and, and figure it out. Like, you know, people will figure it out. People can get free marijuana if they really need it and there's a, a condition there. If we have a program like that. Well, I mean, the free market is figuring it out right now. I know. You know, I mean, it's it, it's a black market, but it's a free market. You know, but it's too expensive. And no, 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 it is too expensive. It is too expensive, but it's it's because of the fact that it's illegal that Patients it's that expensive. Get you know, you know, and then people have to go through all sorts of effort, or you know, it has to travel from somewhere else. Right? I, know. I mean, there's there's all sorts of factors. We need to take in there that down. And stuff. We need to just let people grow their own marijuana. No, in everyone should be able yeah. to. It should not be. I mean, I think I that uh, true, it truly. seems like Maine has like a much better. Exactly. System and Rhode Island, than, and then we do here. You know and what Rhode I mean? Island. Maine and, and Rhode Island. That's exactly a good point, Frank. We we do have to wrap this up and get to uh, some other things. But you are so right on this. Massachusetts, 
needs what they should really be looking at is the states where it's working at and they don't have to be california or oregon or the places that they're worried about look at rhode island and maine they both have great caregiver programs no patients have been denied access prices have come down there's not a lot of violence there's not a lot of problems it's working why don't we just do the same thing that they're doing what what has been working why do we have to go all the way and be so strict and ridiculous and shut out patients again? Because there's always been and always will be, unfortunately, this you know, Puritan under you know tone yeah, to that. Massachusetts. And I think the, there's more money the here. There's you know? more. There's more of a uh, a doctor, lawyer, uh, you know, yeah, professional yeah. center here, and they're invested to uh, make some money off of us patients. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's definitely a good point. There is that there's already a, a network here of, of folks. And, uh, but there's also a network so. of us here, and we're not going to let it happen. And uh, like I said, continue to keep up because Mike Cannon, the King of Pot 2016, is uh, something someone started recently, and, and uh, we, we agreed to join up and, and keep it going. And uh, we're going to be promoting that, and we're working together. Do a lot more videos. You saw uh, Frank Capone's video with the King of Pot recently, and my video, and the King of Pot's video, and there's a lot going on. And we're not going to stop, we're going to take it directly to the DPH, we're going to need you to come out to the event, show up and support us in the, in the King of Pot and myself, hopefully, are going to get right into that belly of the beast and get our questions answered. That's right. 617-206-1050. We should take a break. Let's break it up. Two hotheads.